In this video, we are going to see about how to handle sensitive values in Azure Databricks. As a data engineer, there can be multiple instances where we had to use notebooks to assess sensitive values such as passwords, IDs, keys, personal identifiable information, etc. In such cases, most of the time, all the sensitive information will be stored as a secrets or keys in the Azure Key Vault and then we can use notebooks to assess the sensitive information directly from the key vault. This process is really important to understand since it is one of the most common use case in Azure Data Engineering. So in this video, let's see how we can do this. Firstly, I'll go to the resource group. Here, I have already created a key vault. Let's open this and create a new secret in the key vault. For that, in the left side, you can find an option called secrets. So let's click on it. Cool, as you can see here, we are getting an error message that says the operation is not allowed by RBAC. RBAC stands for role-based access control. What this means is, currently I do not have any role assigned to access the secrets in the key vault. Say for example, if I go to the access control and click on the role assignments, as you can see here, these are the only role assigns to this key vault. This Mr. K account does not have any role assigned which is specific to accessing the secrets and that is the reason we are getting that error message. So now let's assign the roles. For that, let's click on this add button and choose the add role assignment option. As you can see here, these are different types of roles related to Azure Key Vault. Since we are looking for the access to create a new secret, there will be a role called Key Vault Secret Officer. So this role helps to perform any actions on the secrets of a key vault except manage permissions. So basically we can assign this role, the user can perform any actions related to secrets like creating, deleting and updating the secrets. So this is the exact role that we need, right? So let's choose this and click on next. Here we are assigning the permission to the user which is Mr. K. So let's click on the select members and type Mr. K and choose the Mr. K account and click on the select button. And finally, let's click on this review and assign button over here. Cool, so now we have assigned the Key Vault Secret Officer role to the Mr. K account. So now if you go to the Secrets tab, you'll not be seeing that error message, which means that now this user can create any secrets in this Key Vault. So for creating a new secret, let's click on this generate slash import button. Here, firstly, let's give a name for the secret as Databricks hyphen secret. After giving the name, we can give the value for the secret as TEST test. Okay, so now our secret name is Databricks hyphen secret and the value for the secret is test. Once you are happy, let's click on this create button. Cool, so we have created a secret in this shoe key vault. Now let's see how we can access this secret using the Databricks notebook. So for that, I'll go back to the Databricks workspace here, under the repos, I'll go inside the Mr. K account directory. Firstly, let's create a new branch for this work. For that, let's click on this main branch. And here, let's choose the create branch option. Now let's give the name of the branch as future slash key vault test and click on the create button. Okay, so now we have created the new future branch. Firstly, in this future branch, I'm going to create a new notebook. For that, let's right click here and click on create notebook. Let's change the name of the notebook as key vault test. Nice, now let's see how we can access the secrets from the key vault using this notebook. For doing this, the first and the foremost step is to establish a connection between the Databricks workspace and the Azure key vault. For making this connection, we need to create something called secret scope in Azure Databricks. So only by using this secret scope, the Azure Databricks can access the secrets from the key vault. So to create the secret scope, I have opened an official Microsoft documentation in another tab. Here, you'll find an URL. So to create the secret scope, you need to use this URL format. So let's copy this URL and in a new tab, let's paste it. Now, in this URL, we need to update one thing, which is Databricks instance. So to get the Databricks instance, let's jump back to the Databricks workspace. Here in the URL, we can grab the instance name of our Databricks workspace, which starts from adb until databricks.net. 
So this is the instance name of our Databricks workspace. So let's copy this and jump back to another tab and replace it with the Databricks instance in the URL. Cool, so this is the final URL that we need to use to create a secret scope in the Databricks workspace. So let's click enter now. Cool, as you can see here, we'll be taken to a new page to create the secret scope. Okay, first let's give the scope name as Key Wall Scope. After giving the name, you'll be seeing an option called Manage Principle, which is mainly used to set up who can have access to manage the secret scope. So you have two options here the creator or all users. I'll go with the creator option, which means that only the person who creates the secret scope can access it. After that, the most important part is to configure the connection details for the key vault. For this, we need to fill in two things, which are DNS name or otherwise called as vault URI, and then we need to provide the resource ID of the key vault. So these two details can be grabbed from the Azure key vault. So for that, let's go to the key vault and here in the left side, you'll see an option called properties. So let's click on it. Here, firstly, you'll see an option called vault URI, which is the DNS name. So let's copy this and go back to the secret scope page and paste it in the DNS name text box. Similarly, for resource ID, we can grab this from the key vault. So this is the resource ID for the key vault. So let's copy this and go back to the secret scope page and paste it in the resource ID text box. Okay, so now we have given all the details for creating the secret scope. We can now click on this create button to create the secret scope. Okay, we have successfully created the secret scope. So let's click on this okay button. Now what we need to do is, in the notebook, we need to use a secret scope that we created to access the secret from the key vault. Let's see how we can do that. I have opened an official Microsoft document in another tab which gives information about how to use notebooks to access the secrets from the key vault. Here, we can just grab this part of the code, which is the important one. Let's copy this code and go back to the Databricks notebook and paste it in the cell. Also, one thing we need to do first is starting the cluster to execute the cells. So let's start it. Okay, so now we need to make few changes in this code. The first one is the variable name. So let's change this to secret underscore name. After that, here we are using the dbutils.secret.get function to access the secret. In this function, we need to provide two details. The first one is the scope and the second one is the key. For the scope, we need to provide the secret scope name that we created earlier. And for the key, we need to provide the actual secret name that we are trying to access. Firstly, I will update the secret scope name to key wall scope which is the name we used while creating the secret scope. Next, for the secret name, I'll go back to the Azure key vault and go to the secrets. And let's copy the name of the secret, which is databricks-secret, and jump back again to the notebook and paste it over here. Okay, so now we have a code with a function which uses the secret scope to get the value of the secret. The value of the secret will be saved to this variable secret underscore name. So our cluster is ready. Let's run this cell now. Okay, we are getting an error message that says permission denied. The reason for this is, so far we have only established a connection between this Databricks workspace and the Azure key vault using secret scope. But this Databricks workspace does not have access to read the secret. What I mean by this is, I'll go to the Azure key vault and click on the access control and go to the role assignments. As you can see here, the Databricks workspace does not have any access to read the secret. So similar to how we added a role to the Mr. K account for giving privileges to create a secret, we need to add a role for the Databricks workspace for giving access to read the secret. So for doing that, let's click on this add button and choose add role assignment option. Now we need to assign a role which allows the Databricks to just read the secret, right? So for that, there will be a role called key wall secret user. As you can see the description of the role, which is read secret content. So basically, if you assign this role to Databricks, then it can just read the secrets, which is the one that we are looking for. So let's choose this and click on next button. Okay, here, last time we gave the permission to the Mr. K account, which is a user. 
Now we need to assign roles to the Databricks workspace. So for that, we are going to use an inbuilt Databricks service principle, which is unique across all the Databricks workspace in the tenant. So what I mean by this is, let's click on the select member button and here I will type issue Databricks. Cool, so this is the service principle we are going to use to assign this role. So as said before, this service principle is an inbuilt one which will be available for all the Azure tenants. So let's select this and click on review and assign button. Cool, so now we have totally added two roles. One for the Mr. K account, which is the Key Vault Secret Officer, and the other one for the Databricks, which is the Key Vault Secret User role. Cool, so now let's jump back to the Databricks notebook and try to run the code again. Cool, now we have successfully executed the cell without any error, which is nice. Now the variable secret underscore name will have the value of the secret, which is test. One interesting thing about Databricks is, say for example, if I try to print the secret value using a print statement, you'll not be able to see the actual value. Instead, you'll be seeing something like redacted, which is not meaningful at all. This is a great feature of Azure Databricks, which provides additional security in dealing with sensitive values. Using Databricks, we cannot directly expose any secret values which is read from Azure Key Vault. So since we know the actual secret value, we can test this by using a simple if-else logic similar to this. Here, basically if the variable contains the value as test, then we'll get a message as success, otherwise failure. So let's run the cell. Cool, as you can see here, we are getting the message as success which means that the secret value is correctly read and assigned to the variable as test. So if I change the value here, you'll be seeing an error message as failure. Cool, I think now you have a clear understanding of how to use Azure Databricks to read any sensitive values from the Key Vault. So there are many ways to do this, but this is one of the most commonly used approach in handling the sensitive values in Azure Databricks. That's it for today and if you like this video, please give a like and subscribe to my channel. See you in another great video. Until then, cheers. Bye.